This portrait of John Crow is the most wonderful portrait that's by um, an artist with uh, a metropolitan uh, reputation, John Opie. Uh, John Opie was, if you like, a, a Cornish uh, painter, but he made his reputation uh, not so much in Cornwall, but in, in London. And it was to London that John Crow went as a young man to learn his trade, to learn uh, how to become an artist. He was obviously a man of aspiration and had some um, uh, ambition to uh, make uh, a go of things, not simply in Norwich, but uh, in, in the metropolis, to have this kind of uh, relationship with um, not only John Opie, but also William Beechy, another uh, uh, London artist with, with a Norwich Norfolk uh, links. He was obviously quite a, um, uh, a charismatic teacher, it seems, because it was as a result of this man that the whole idea of the Norwich School of Artists was kind of formulated in the metropolis. Uh, the first idea of uh, somebody acting, on the, uh, acting as a painter in East Anglia, as far as London was concerned, was John Crow, and they always talked of him as Old Crow of Norwich. This painting is Crow's masterpiece. It is the most wonderful example of the artist as his most uh, absolute in the way he lays his paint on the canvas, the way you can look at the detail of the picture. It's, it's a beautiful scene, it's a wonderful scene in, in its overall effect, because of course you're able to enjoy uh, the river scene in the evening light. If you look closely in detail at those people, you see just how they are very sleepy, they're catching crabs in the water. And yet if you look in detail at that, that paint, this, there is nothing linear about this paint. It's just the application of brush strokes. These are not carefully delineated uh, figures. They are almost slabs of paint. Very beautifully laid on. This is the place, I believe, where this painting was was done by John Crome. Uh, somewhere around between 1812 and 1819, the river was it's got the same feel to it. Uh, we know the river bank has changed slightly in shape, but the feel is the same. Even though this was painted in the height of the summer, and here we are, virtually in the winter, but it's the light, the vegetation, the lie of the land. Um, and a few other clues in the buildings which I've researched and that does seem to be, this is where I think he actually set up his easel all those years ago. Looking in detail at these pictures is the most rewarding way to see these paintings. If you look at the detail, you see that there, is, there are little bits of sand and dust in the pigment, in the paint. And this painting has all the appearance of the artist going out into the landscape and painting direct from nature, which we know he liked to do and which we know his students found so inspirational. It's not a studio picture. This is a panel painting. It's a piece of millboard. He's almost certainly sat down at this spot and he's put this millboard on his knees. It's a windy, blustery day. The trees are windy and blustery in themselves, but the paint has got dirt and debris in it. And this is not so much, um, uh, you know, the idea of a, of a poor artist with, with um, a lack of ability to, to purchase fine paints. It, it, it's not that at all. It's, 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 it's more uh, an appreciation of the, of the life that he can get into his sketch, the immediacy of a sketch on, on the spot. And he's captured the light as it picks out the the uh, two little figures as they make their way through the uh, sunlit uh, path through the uh, distant um, grove scene.